Tomahawk TV News, Montague County's only newscast, coming at you from Nocona High School. Welcome to the first newscast of 2018 and the first installation of Tomahawk TV Entertainment News. I'm your host, Connor Barrett, bringing you the latest in entertainment news, where we have Indian Insight Tech Reviews reviewing the Nintendo Switch. Following that, we have NHS Gamer reviewing the second installation of Star Wars Battlefront, and each of these segments, the host will explain our brand new ranking systems for these products and games. And to kick it all off is me with National Sports News. Playoff time has rolled around for the NFL again, and everyone's making their predictions. After Wild Card Weekend, the Falcons beat out the Rams 26-13, the Saints beat out the Panthers 31-26, the Jags beat out the Bills 10-3, and I'm sorry, that just did not look like a playoff game. It was trash. And uh, Marcus Mariota threw a touchdown pass to himself. That was pretty cool. And the Titans beat the Chiefs 22-21. This has only happened twice in NFL history, so, you know, bask in the glory. Now I'm going to go ahead and predict that the Jags and Pats are going to be playing in the AFC Championship. The Pats are going to beat out the Titans and the Jags are going to beat out the Steelers. In the NFC, I'm predicting that the Eagles and the Aints are going to play in the championship. And because they're the Pats, I think New England's going to be playing in the Super Bowl 52. I also predict the Eagles are going to beat out the Aints and win the NFC Championship and also go on to the Super Bowl. Brady has his fifth! What a comeback! But when it all comes down to it, I think the Patriots are going to execute and Tom Brady's going to get his sixth Super Bowl ring. Well, that's it for this week in sports. Don't agree with my picks? Comment a time and place below and we can meet up and fight. I'm Connor Barrett, signing off for Tomahawk Sports. Hello, I'm Alex Perez, and I'm here to explain our new rating system for games and tech. Considering they are two different things, they have two different systems. However, they are both rated on a 20-point system and giving up to five points on four different categories. For games, those categories are gameplay, story, immersion, and charm. Gameplay being how well the game runs and how well the controls handle in said game. Story is the, well, story of the game and how well it is delivered. Immersion is how the game keeps you tied to its story and the world it builds around itself. And last but not least, we have charm. This accounts for the things like how fun it was. For instance, games like Skate 3 were fundamentally broken, yet still fun to play because of the absurdity of the glitches and crashes. Now with that explanation out of the way, we go on to tech. We grade tech based on design, usability, performance, and usefulness. Design is whether or not it looks nice and handles well. Then usability is how well it feels when used and how easy it is to use them. Performance, how well they run and do their job. And finally, usefulness, which is basically how they fit into your everyday life. We hope with this system, we can help you find the games and tech that's just right for you. This has been Alex Perez explaining your Tomahawk review system, signing out. With that out of the way, it's time to start with our first piece of tech, the Nintendo Switch. The Switch was released in March 3rd of 2017 and has since become one of Nintendo's most popular consoles, selling 520,000 consoles in its first month and going on to sell a total of 3 million in Japan that year, beating out the PS2 sales of the first year just barely. The Switch continues Nintendo's trend of trying new things with each of its consoles. And with the Switch, the gimmick it sells itself on is the fact that it's a hybrid, both a home console and a portable. With that said, the design looks more like it caters to the portable side. The Switch's main console is basically a portable screen with a controller on the side. It rocks a red and blue look, and it's quite nice to bring with you to game on the go. It also comes in a solid black, and many other designs for those looking for a little more variety. Though the Switch itself looks slick, the same can't be said about the dock. The dock looks basically like a glorified piece of plastic, which it basically is, and only serves to connect the Switch to the TV and charge it. Although, you can get custom skins for the dock, which really adds nothing to the system itself. 
Now with that out of the way, time to talk about how this thing handles. The switch feels real nice in your hands, and when it's docked, the Joy-Cons feel nice in each hand with the slide-ons attached. But the controllers are so varied and have so many uses that I feel like they need a whole video on their own. Which, don't worry, they'll get. The console itself is a great portable console, with more power than most other portable gaming systems out there. It feels sturdy and makes gaming on the go feel nice and powerful. Speaking about power, the Switch has a 720p screen by itself and does work up to 1080p when it's hooked up to a TV. As far as home consoles go, the Switch barely compares to modern gen giants like the Xbox One and PS4. On the portable end of the spectrum, however, it's easy to say that the Switch is one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, console out there today. That sort of power, it's easy to see why the Switch has quickly become one of Nintendo's most popular consoles. All that being said, we here at Tomahawk TV News gave the Nintendo Switch an 18 out of 20. Everything from its design to performance shows that Nintendo is still the gaming giant it used to be. And when it comes to making innovative ideas a reality, no one does it better than Nintendo. The Switch comes in at a price under $300, and it's well worth it in our eyes. This has been Alex Perez with your Indian Insight Tech Review, signing out. Hello everybody and welcome back to the NHS Gamer. This year we're back and better than ever. Well, better than last year. Did you play that? Looks like it. Now for this week's review of Star Wars Battlefront 2. Battlefront 2 is mainly a combat-based game, much like many other first- or third-person shooters, but this one includes an immersive campaign that follows the story of the Empire's covert Inferno squad, more specifically, the leader of the squad, Aiden Versio. Throughout the campaign, you see the plot towards the rise of the First Order, along with clues that give hints towards events within the franchise's newest movie, The Last Jedi by director J.J. Abrams. Within the combat aspect, however, story and canon have been thrown out the window. It is possible to play as Darth Maul fighting against Rey on Naboo during the Clone Wars. This kind of contradicts EA taking away the customization option in order not to break the canon. However, their gameplay, although extremely glitchy at times, can be mostly smooth, with decent controls that work with your style of play, and fairly good graphics that put you into the galaxy of Star Wars, whatever planet you may choose. But the true downfall of this game was that EA tried to squeeze every last cent from the game as they could. How could they get more money from a game already bought? Microtransactions. In-game currency that makes it almost unplayable without another sum of money thrown away at Electronic Arts. For a while between the beta and about a day after release, this game was classified by most players to be a pay-to-win game, where you buy currency and loot boxes in order to gain an unfair advantage over other players. That was until there was a massive backlash by the gaming community, and soon all kinds of microtransactions by EA were done away with. The ultimate acknowledgement of their mistake. But apart from their blind greed, DICE and EA truly did make a game that set the standard for sci-fi warfare, and in doing so, created something that's all around fun to play and captivating to follow. My name is Garrett Stone with the NHS Gamer. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week. Well, that's all for this week in entertainment. At least we don't have a fashion segment anymore. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune in next week.